Hi, I'm Barry Olney from InCircuit Design. This is a quick demonstration of the new Coplanar Waveguide Planar, which forms part of the 2017 ICD Design Integrity software release. As you can see, we have the Stack Up Planner and the PDN Planner, which have been part of the toolset for quite a few years now. And we have this year introduced the Coplanar Waveguide Planner as well. Now it has five popular structures, single and dual grounded or conductor backed waveguides. So we have the single here and the dual here, so two traces in this case between two copper pores on the outer layers and also a reference plane underneath that. Uh, we also have single and dual coplanar waveguides which have no ground reference plane but have copper pores on either side of the coplanar strips and we have a dual coplanar strip which has no copper pores and no ground reference plane. Alright, I'll go back to the single coplanar waveguide planer with the ground plane. Coplanar waveguides have been used in RF and microwave design for many years now but as signal frequencies and rise times are increasing uh, they're now coming back into vogue. A typical example of this type of single coplanar strip would be used for RF design. Here you can see we have in this schematic here we have an RF output and this would generally be 50 ohms for instance and the output comes from the the chip and it goes through an inductor and then has a capacitor off the ground on either side and it goes through in a series inductor and then into a series capacitor to the RF output which would be an RF connector. Now if you look at the layout of this you'll see how the signal comes out of the chip, it goes through the inductor L3 and then there's two capacitors either side going to ground and then through another serial inductor and then through a serial capacitor into the 50 ohm connector. Now the idea is to keep this trace constant width uh, as you go through the SMD components. Uh, they're generally 0402 components. You need to keep the trace and the component land pattern the same size so that there's no reflections due to discontinuities in impedance. To do that we need a 20 mil trace for instance to match the land pattern size. So we have 20 mils coming out of the chip through the SMT components and then out to the connector. And also you'll notice here we have a, a line of wires or a shielding fence of wires and this blocks any electromagnetic uh, coupling. So it's, it's good to have this uh, right along the edge of the, the strip line trace at at least a quarter wavelength separation. Now I'll just get this out of the way and we'll go back to the the single coplanar waveguide grounded structure. So this is a structure we would use for that type of interface. Um, 50 ohms or in this case 49.98 ohms and we have a ground plane and we have copper either side of a single trace and we have the row of shielding wires here which go down to the ground plane below. So what I'll do first of all, um, you'll notice here we have the basic microstrip construction. I'll change this to a core um, generally, when we have 10, 10 mil of um, dielectric, we would um, use a prepreg, but in this case, I'll use a core. We're using Rogers 4350B material, which is a 10 gigahertz material and ideal for RF and microwave. So, what I'll do is open up the library and we'll edit this dielectric. And first of all, we'll go to the Rogers material and we'll select the 4350 material and in this case we want a 10 mil thickness and we want a 10 gig uh, frequency. So I'll insert that. So this gives us our 48.98 ohms and then we need to replace the solder mask. It's good not to use plating over coplanar waveguides as ENIG plating tends to have losses when it hits around 2.7 gigahertz. So in practice, a thin coating of liquid photo in an imageable solder mask will have less losses than a plating or pure copper itself. So now I'll edit this solder mask and in this case we'll select a 
Teo solder mask and again we're looking for a 10 gigahertz material so here we've got 10 gigahertz and we'll insert that so here we have a model for the structure of this single strip coplanar waveguide that we, you, you would use for an RF output. Coplanar waveguides are also good for high speed serial link CERTES design. In a case like this we have differential CERTES signals and you would typically have AC coupling uh, on these differential serial links and they may be running at 10 to 25 gigabits per second so very high speed and the reason you have the the AC coupling in series with the differential signal signals has a number of advantages over differential signaling. First of all, it, it provides level shifting, so we could have echo, for instance, going into an LVDS device. So one signal is one at one voltage and the other is another, so the capacitors in series uh, provides level shifting. It also removes the common mode component of a differential signal. So when you have a common mode component, it tends to radiate. And so by putting a capacitor in series, we can remove that common mode component and reduce that radiation. It also provides protection against high input voltages um, if it's overloaded in some way. Coplanar waveguides can form part of a normal structure. If you look at um, in the stack up planar, for instance, we could use a coplanar waveguide structure as part of the microstrip on top or bottom of the PCB and have our high speed serial links running on the outside of the board in the microstrip configuration. The coplanar waveguide without a reference plane uh, can be used in both single and dual strip mode and these are good if you have a really thick substrate with no reference plane or conductor backing. The dual coplanar strips are good for the isolation of external ethernet interfaces. Thank you very much.